these last couple of weeks since the launch of Bonner have been really, 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 really hectic. Uh, but, uh, but I've enjoyed them, really enjoyed them actually. I'm glad to be free of the constraints of a party which wants all of its members just to be quiet and never say nothing about what, what's happening. I don't want to be part of that lifestyle. I never was before. Um, I struggled with it when we got in with National and I'm glad to be out. Um, generally, uh, I think Māori want leaders who are going to be strong, uh, positive, um, principled. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not Jesus or nothing. I'm not nothing flash. But um, when something's going wrong, then somebody needs to say so. Somebody, somebody needs to step up to the plate. And, uh, you know, if, you know not, try not to be nasty to my Māori party mates, but if they want to be quiet about it, that's their business. But I don't think that uh, Māori wants us to be quiet about it, and I'm not going to be. It's been quite funny for me, for me particularly, going around the country and having all these parkers come up and shake my hand. But I never really thought that much about how it's impacting on everybody. But it is. And they're coming up, and, and a lot of them are saying to me that they, what, they, what they like about me couple of things. One is that I'm saying it the way it is. And two, they just don't get Phil Goff anymore. And they don't see Phil Goff anymore as the leader of the of the working class. They don't see him as the champion of the poor. And they're looking for another voice. Eh? And if you look across the, the, the leadership group, John Key, Don Brash, <laughs> Phil Goff, <coughs> Jim Anderton, Peter Dunn, Peter Sharples, you know, they're all sort of, no offence much with but <laughs> they're all kind of just about holders of the gold card, you know what I mean, eh? Same old, same. Same old, same old, eh? Old school, <coughs> old school, dull, boring politics, yeah. keep the niggers in their place yeah. while the rich boys get richer. That's really what it is. Uh, the Wunaheke tax is a simple tax. It's based on financial transactions. When you spend money, it's a tax of 1%. That's all. Just 1%. So GST, down to 1%. It's as simple as that. The difference is that the wide boys who float all of the money on the financial markets, right? It's not the billions. We found out it's trillions of dollars a year. They don't pay nothing. They don't pay nothing. Not a cent. And all we're saying is you bring us all back down to 1%, and you put 1% on them, and the government's revenue goes from 55 billion to 93. It's as simple as that. Because the rich boys would finally be paying their share. Uh, Don Brash took me aside and he says, that's when he said, you don't know, only you've got to understand, when they work these markets, it's on the basis of, of points of a percent. You can't take 1% off them. I said, you know, Don, I really don't care. I don't give a shit. All I know is that all of my relations are paying 15% on everything, and you and your mates are paying bug all on millions. So, so that's what the 15%, uh, that's what the, the Honeheke tax is about. Its technical name is a financial transaction tax of 1%, right? Um, in England, they call it the Robin Hood tax. When they brought it down here, they said, oh, we've got the Robin Hood tax. I said, not in my country, mate. <laughs> not down here, we ain't going to call it the Robin Hood tax. Down here it'll be called the Wanaheke Lex. Because our aim is to chop down the GSD.